Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about time management tips for medical coding exam test takers. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Today's episode was inspired by a viewer comment, so I'm going to read the comment and then we're going to get into it. So let us begin. The comment goes and thank you to the viewer who made the comment. I failed my test twice. My last score was 64% and my first attempt was 54%. I ran out of time during the last three sections. I scored the lowest on those. Are there any suggestions on how to prepare, on how to practice time management during the test? So I always say this when people ask me about time management, how do you get through and how do you hurry up and read these long notes or these long questions? How do you get through that? The thing about it is you have to get into that right head space of you don't have to get 100% of the questions correct. And sometimes people will spin their wheels on a question that they otherwise would not have known anyway. Uh, there's there's going to be subjects that you're not going to be strong in. So in those instances, you want to just do your best to do process of elimination, select the best possible answer and move on. You have to be able to get through these uh, questions on this test with a certain level of expediency because you're going to need the extra time to read longer notes or to read longer questions. So if you can go through and eliminate really quickly the shorter questions, obviously that would really help on your time. I know with AHIMA exams, um, you don't have that choice because they're computer-based exams, AHIMAs are. Uh, and so you have to basically answer the question as soon as it pops up. There is no flagging of the questions. They have, they have since stopped the flagging thing. So uh, if you are taking an AHIMA exam, be prepared that when the question pops up on the screen, you have to answer it and move on. You cannot go back. Uh, it's not like before where you could do that. Um, they did stop that. So, and with AAPC, you have paper-based exams. So uh, if you're taking it at a proctor place, <laughs> obviously if you're taking it at home, uh, I don't know if they allow flagging or any of that stuff. Um, but I know that if you're going to a place that you have to go to have this proctored, uh, with a live person, then you, it is a paper-based exam. And obviously, I think that's more beneficial, right? Because you can go back and review and, and skip a question if you need to and go back to it because it's a paper-based exam, right? <laughs> uh, but that all aside, right? You only have to meet a certain amount in order to pass these certification exams. So have that in your head. Not that you want to miss a bunch so that you barely pass, but you can tell yourself this so that you can kind of relax when it comes to, oh, I have to get every single question right. There's going to be some questions that are going to hang you up like, well, should I pick this way? Should I not pick this way? Whatever your gut instinct says to go with, that's what you want to go with. Don't spend too much time second guessing yourself. The thing is the clock is ticking. And whether you're taking an AHIMA exam or AAPC exam, it's roughly about two minutes per question, give or take, right? Um, give or take a few seconds <laughs> uh, on each. So you're really trying to get through in a quick, quick manner, okay? Like I said, sometimes you're gonna see a question on there, it's gonna ask you a very basic question and you're gonna be able to get through it in 10 seconds and move on to the next question. So you have all of that extra time that you're building up um, on those questions that you can just get through, right? Uh, so that you get to those longer op notes. And a lot of times people will get intimidated by looking at those long op notes. The thing about the long op notes is usually the first portion of an op note is going to be like the induction of the um, anesthesia and that kind of thing. Uh, it's usually around the middle section to the end section is where you have all of the action going on. <laughs> so that's really where you want to kind of focus your attention when you're looking at those longer notes. You can kind of like skim through the first part and then get to that middle section, get to the last section. So that way you know what actually happened. Start learning the words that you need to look for. Start learning those words that are going to stand out in, in op notes, right? Uh, like if they are going through arthroscopically, obviously, if you're working with a CPT, you know that's the very first section you're going to go to, arthroscopy, uh, because that is where that's where the whole uh, 
uh, procedure is taking place. That's how you realize it. Or if they're doing an open uh, procedure, then you're going to be able to go to wherever um, it is that they are operating on. So that is something to know. You've got to get more familiar with the language so that you can get through the book a lot quicker. My tip on the books, though, is this, guys. You don't have to read the entire books, but I have always suggested that you at least sit down and open each book and flip each page. You don't have to read the whole book, but what happens is it's getting you familiar with the book. Now, people will say, well, Blue, I've tabbed my book, so I don't have to go through all of that. Here's the thing with the tabs, guys. Uh, if you're doing your practices, like before you go in for your test, if you've been doing your practices, if you've been uh, spending lots of time with your book, you aren't going to need the tabs. The tabs are going to actually get in the way. So don't become dependent on tabs. Uh, again, it is going to get in your way. You're going to have all of these other things going on as you're trying to look up these codes. And then if you have something that's on there that's distracting you, it can really throw you off. So the best thing to do is recognize that these books already have the answers. You just have to be familiar enough with them in order to be able to get to those answers quickly. So take the time and uh, look through each one of your books that you are using. If you are um, taking the exam with AAPC or HEMA, uh, look at the books that you need so that way you can see which books that you need to go through. Get familiar with the appendixes if your book has appendixes, the publishers are all different. Of course, we all know if you've been with my channel for a while, how much I love Optum 360 coding. Uh, this is not an ad for them, but um, I do use their books. I use their ICD-10 CM books. I use their ICD-10 PCS books um, and I use their Hickspix book. Uh, the one that I use for my CPT manual obviously comes from the AMA or the American Medical Association. It is a CPT professional edition and that is the book that you need for either a HEMA or AAPC <laughs> exams. Uh, so it is a good thing to get familiar with those. Uh, in the CPT manual, they have the appendixes in the back that give a lot of really good information about those modifiers. Getting familiar with those modifiers is also very important. You have to know um, where they are in the book, what they're for, when to use them, uh, when would it be appropriate, right? So. Taking the time to do all that before, while you're studying, uh, it can set you up for success on your test. Um, taking this test is, is, is nerve wracking. Yes, there's people that get nervous about tests all the time, guys. I, I get it. Um, but when it comes to being in that room and, and being there with that test and, oh, I only have two minutes per question, you, you kind of have to stop thinking like that, okay? You have to go through quickly. And, and when you get through one question quickly in 15 seconds, uh, you know that you have more time for those difficult ones. Uh, if your test is broken down into sections, think about how much time you wanna spend in that section and use that as your guide, use that as your goal. You wanna get the first half of it done in this amount of time, and you wanna use the second half for this amount of time. All right. So there is always that, you know, we don't know with Ahima, we don't know how many questions we're going to get. OK, uh, that's the thing. All right. <laughs> uh, because every test is different. So they give us a range. We don't have a set number of questions. AAPC has a set number of questions on their exams. So it's a little bit easier to kind of gauge that time. But with Ahima, if you're taking an Ahima exam, think about the way that the tests are set up. The first half is uh, the multiple choice, and then the second half is your case studies or whatever what have you, and you go from there, and that's how you decide. So that way you know you're giving yourself enough time. You're giving yourself plenty of time. So that is what you want to do. Do practice drills before you go into your exam. I mean, obviously, when you've been studying, um, you can go through like a 10 question quiz or something and start coding from there to see how fast you are with looking up um, codes in the book. You want to get into that good practice. I tell people to read the coding guidelines, the ICD-10 CM uh, diagnosis coding guidelines once per week when they are in school 
because this is going to get you two things. <laughs> it is very good for two reasons. Number one, um, it will make you very familiar with the guidelines. And there is nothing more important than that. When you are familiar with the guidelines, you have everything. Okay. Number two, it is going to make you a faster reader. Like I said before, if you are a runner, right? If you, if anybody, if any of you have been a runner, right? There, are, any of you have run track, any of you have run cross country, or any of those things, you know that it takes time to build up your speed. You're not gonna uh, start out at a seven minute mile, <laughs> you know, when you're first running, right? You're not gonna be able to do that. It takes time to build that skill. It's the same thing with building your skill, looking up codes in the book and getting familiar with the book, right? Enough that you're gonna be able to get through these um, these tests quickly and you're gonna be able to recognize these words that you are gonna be looking for that will help you to understand, okay, this is where I have to be in the book or this is a section of the book that I'm gonna be looking in. So that is the thing that you need to be aware of. Like I said, it's just gonna take some time. <laughs> you know it's gonna take some time, but um, getting through that test and accepting the first answer that comes to your mind is another good tactic, okay? We always go, we always, when we go against our gut instinct, what happens? Oh, I knew I should have picked that one or I knew I should have went that way because I second guessed myself. It never works when you second guess yourself. When you're sitting there second guessing yourself, that's just the, the time is just siphoning away uh, from you being able to complete your exam on time. Don't get hung up, guys. If you know there's a section in there that you are not really familiar with, you weren't very strong in coding with, um, it is okay to look at the available options that you have for if there if it's multiple choice. Just choose the best answer and move on. Don't get hung up on that. And I'm going to keep saying it. Don't get hung up. Don't get hung up. <laughs> uh, I know it's easier said than done, but when you're taking the time to practice, getting these practice workbooks, um, whether you are uh, taking the, uh, with AAPC, I like their um, CPC exam study guide um, or prep guide or whatever it's called. <laughs> I need to look at the title of that. I always say, I, I don't know, because I said exam prep guide and then somebody asked me, well, what is that? Is that like the study guide? Guys, you know what I mean. It's the, it's the one that's preparing you for the CPC exam. I really like that book because I like the scenarios. Now, there's been a couple of times when I found like, okay, no, I don't think that's, that code is correct. <laughs> uh, but it's okay because it does give you a really good rationale. So that I liked. Um, I do recommend that book. Uh, but whether you are taking an AHIMA exam or AAPC exam, you know, it, it is a good book because it's got a lot of really good practices in it. And it's got the rationale. Um, and, and it's outpatient coding, the CP manual right it's going over that uh, so that is a good thing to practice on don't think just because you do really well in this book though that you're gonna pass the exam all right uh, it is meant to help you to practice so that is why I say it's gonna give you those scenarios and you're gonna be able to time yourself um, that way you can do that type of preparation the other thing that I recommend is when you are preparing for your exam set yourself up in a mock exam whether you are a HEMA or APC get that exam prep book whatever the prep book is for whatever certification you're going to sit for and set aside the exact time that you have to be able to take that exam now if it is a, an AHIMA exam like four hours or if it is if you're taking the the CCA obviously the two hours okay you want to make it like that exam uh, with AAPC I know it's five hours and 40 minutes if you want to break it up and and take one part of it and do it you know for two hours and 40 minutes <laughs> so that way you can kind of like work it that way you can totally do that uh, but it's about timing and setting yourself up in that whole mock type of setting is going to set you up for success because then you can watch the clock you can be able to get through and you know where your weaknesses are in your timing and that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Personally, if I was taking a AAPC certification exam, which I am not certified with AAPC, I will say that. Um, but if I was taking their certification exam, I would take that four, five hours and 40 minutes that they give you for that exam and actually sit it out. 
so that I would go through the practice test so that way I can really test myself to make sure I am doing good on my uh, timing, that I am seeing where my areas of weakness are, where am I taking the most time to um, look at a question or, or think about a question. So that is something that you know you should try to do. Um, I've had people fuss at me before. Well, Blue, uh, I don't have time. Well, I'm just trying to help you. <laughs> I'm trying to help you, and I'm trying to make it where you're setting yourself up for success. Because, yes, while I know people have their families and, and um, things to take care of, and you don't have five hours and 40 minutes, uh, this is to help you to be ready for this exam. And now this exam, you don't want to have to um, keep taking it again and again because obviously it's going to get expensive, right? Uh, I know at AAPC that you get that free retake when you're going into the proctor test. Um, I know with the ones that you're doing at home, if you're doing it at home, then you only get that one try, right? Uh, so everybody would like to pass on their first attempt, but sometimes people's nerves get the better of them and they're not able to pass. But it's really, it's all in here, guys. I mean, you, you have to be in it to win it. You have to be the one that is ready for it. And you have to do all your practices like you should be doing them. Um, because if you're not, it's going to show up in your results. It's going to show up that you haven't been studying with the book. You haven't been reviewing the guidelines. You haven't been flipping through the book so that you can kind of recall where things are in the book. So I just want you guys to be able to pass the certification exam, but use your time that you're preparing for your exam wisely, reading those coding guidelines. And like I said, once per week would be great. You don't have to read them all in one sitting, but just taking the time to even break it down into sections so that you can review it is really going to help you. Skim through there so that way it's recording in your brain, believe it or not, and when you get into your exam, you're going to be a lot faster at reading because you've been reading over these guidelines. So everything that I say is a little, uh, what is it, uh, old fashioned when it comes to these exam prep tips. Um, but it is meant to help you be efficient. I've taken the certification exams with AHIMA twice, once for the CCA and once for the CCSP, and I've passed them both on the first attempt. So these were the things that I used to help me. When I was looking at all the things, when I first took my first certification exam, which was the CCA, uh, I was looking at all these things that I had to learn. I was like, oh my goodness, this is so much, but I am a reader, okay guys? Um, being a reader does help. Uh, it's not 100% it's not the thing that you have to always love to do, uh, but know that that is what we have to do. It is our job. Um, and, and comprehension is also key. So getting through there, practicing with those uh, practice exam books is gonna set you up for success. And it's gonna do a lot for you, but you just have to do the practice. So get in there, practice, um, and be patient with yourself. If you can't get through quickly, it's okay. You have time to practice. And if you have failed, give yourself another, uh, three months or so to get that practice, especially if your exam score was low. If your exam score was low, then you really need to consider how much time and be realistic about it um, that you need to be able to uh, read, study for that exam and be able to sit for it and be successful at your second attempt. Um, when you're looking at the time frame, okay, if there's a deadline, obviously you want to get there by the deadline. Uh, but don't be so in a rush that you're going to set yourself up to fail again. Okay, be realistic. If you did not do well, then you need to look at what you need to study on, concentrate on that, and get refocused. You have to be disciplined, guys. This is not something that anybody else can do but you, because it's only going to be you sitting in that exam seat, <laughs> taking that exam. You can do this, guys. You absolutely can. Uh, but get in there and practice and do it a little bit per day, you know, so that way you don't burn yourself out, but get on a schedule so that way it can help you take those mock exams in the, in the time that you have to take them, uh, take those mock exams. So that way you know your timing, you recognize how fast you're going and get familiar with these books, guys. That is what is going to set you up for success. 
At least that's just my advice anyway. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it has helped you, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Share it uh, because it may help somebody else. You, you never know, all right? And if you're looking for extra practice um, uh, quizzes or crossword puzzles, I have my Patreon channel. And Patreon, if you don't know, is a lot like YouTube. And I will leave the link for that in the description box below. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will see you all next time. Bye.